Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Friday Night Sports. Again, Stan Grava along with Chad Colley. Chad coaches over at Homa Christian. And uh, uh, I think you guys just, I go to the YMCA a lot. Yeah. And y'all you, you, don't arrest me for stalking. I know some of the players back here. I'll sit in the park a lot when y'all practice it in the back <laughs> and watch y'all a little bit in the back. And, and am, I am impressed. You don't have big, big time numbers or anything. But you got kids that when I'm watching practice, y'all get after it and stuff. And you know, when you get right down to it, that's single A football. Yep. That's what it's all about. A lot of kids are gonna have to go two ways. Yeah, absolutely. We have a total of 25 kids on the roster, um, which is a couple of people like, oh my gosh. But you know, you look at it, like I said, that, that, that's single A football. I figure anywhere from 15, uh, 15 to 35, I know it's a big span, but that's, I'm assuming that's what the teams will average in players. So. Um, the things we do, they'll be doing too, you know, having kids going both ways and things like that. And we do have a lot that go both ways, but um, we've, we've got kids that we could sub in to give breaks. And tonight they did an excellent job. And if we can continue to get those guys who could come in and sub while, uh, while the Nate Fries have a break, uh, we'll have a chance to win some football games. Very good. This is going to be weird for you. <laughs> this is the first time you're going to have to watch highlights of uh, Central Lafouche. And uh, we do want to, you know, I was talking to you during the break. You and Travis are still very close. You told me yeah. you had just talked to Travis yeah. right before you came in. Those guys were taking on Clark. Is this who you had in the Jamboree last year? Yeah, it sure way? is. Yeah. Uh, Clark. Now, the one thing we do understand about Clark, folks, now, this is the team that's coming into Homa to take on HL Bourgeois next Friday. It, it, you know, there were rumors spreading out earlier in the week that they may not even have enough kids to play this year to field the team. So, you know, if they didn't or they were on the borderline, Travis made sure that they don't have a lot of confidence. Now let's get out to South Lafouche. This is the Clark Bulldogs out in New Orleans against the Trojans of Central Lafouche. And there are the cheerleaders of Central Lafouche before the game. Here is the quarterback for Clark, and folks, we do have, I assume we have no roster because it says number three to number four. <laughs> I hate to insult your intelligence. I know you knew that, but let's just watch Clark on offense just a little bit. I'm trying to look at their sideline to see if anybody's down there on their sideline. That's actually a pretty nice play. <laughs> they get down to about the 10-yard line of Central Lafouche. Again, this is very early on. You recognize the fella, number five? Yep, Jeremiah Ballard. He is a quarterback. He throws it to number 17, Darian Chisley. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me if I say any of these names wrong. That is for a touchdown. Extra point is up by Brader Dufran. I think so. I actually, I think he's a freshman. Is he really? Yeah, I think so. Here we go. Central LaFouche kicks off. Again, that's Dufran. And it's down to about the 30-yard line, and nice coverage by Central Lafouche. So obviously, all of the special teams was played live. Clark's quarterback is intercepted here by Denzel Falls. Did I say that right? Yep. Let's see what he does with the ball after he catches it. Nice return up the left sideline. Uh, I'm gonna assume he got in for a <laughs> touchdown. Sorry about that on the highlight. And the field goal is good, and that's the way it went all night long. No problems for Central Lafouche, 35 to nothing. And as I mentioned, you talked to Travis a little bit. Did he talk about the game at all? Yeah, sure. He was uh, really excited about the way they, they performed the night and uh, starting to feel that they're starting to click on, on all cylinders. And he's just excited about the season. And um, I'm excited to see how they're going to do. And Travis, is he does a great job. He's a great coach. The whole staff. Um, that they're all great coaches. So it's going to be an interesting year, and there's a great tune-up for, for next week against Ponchatoula. Is that game in Ponchatoula? No, it's actually at, at Central. Central Lafouche. Yeah. At Central Lafouche. And I do want to commend you. I was looking through. We send off to sports information directors about kids in our area who are playing collegiate football and out of all the local high schools in the last couple of years, you got the most who are in four-year schools. We didn't get anything from JUCOs yet, but for four-year schools between Kobe getting things straight over at Arkansas Tech, Tech. I think the deep snapper is going to be Ty Boudreaux at Nichols. Nichols. I don't know if you've heard that, but I think yeah. he's a starter. He's, he's the guy they count on. If he's on. not the starter, he's he's definitely in the running. Uh, Jake Dominique, I think, is at Louisiana College. Yes, yes. And who am I forgetting? And with all of that being said, we mentioned last week on the preview show, there's a couple of kids who are really doing well there. We talked about Jordan Cayouette, one that 
we kind of failed to mention up here and we were talking yeah. about a little bit earlier and that's uh jared, jared bro, bro jared bro he's uh jared bros has been a defensive lineman i think he's playing a little bit both ways this year jared's about six two six three he's he's trimmed up a little at 280 but um in a good way he he moves around well and um just talking with coach douglas he's he's definitely going to be a, a division one prospect um you know, still talking with some coaches, some coaches talking about, you know, figuring out if they're going to offer or not. And um, I just think it'd be a great pickup for, for someone like Nichols um, or even the school a little bit bigger. But Jared's a great young man. He's a great student and, and he plays the game like it's supposed to be played. Very good, very good. Let's get back down to South LaFouche. South LaFouche taking on Miller McCoy in the second game. Miller McCoy, a magnet school, so they're going to be a little bit, I don't know what you call it, well, better organized. And actually, I understand they are pretty much loaded with athletes as the Tarpons come out of the breakthrough. Here's a guy, I talk about him a lot, but last year he really impressed me when I saw South LaFouche play a couple of times, and that's Seth Griffin. He throws the ball to Cody Kale. He is brought down at about the 30-yard line, and here's a handoff to Bruce Lee. And Bruce Lee, still wearing number 18, goes around right in. He's running hard. Now, Miller McCoy's got a lot of athletes, and if they get it together, it's something you got to watch out for. Seth Griffin on a pass to, uh, I have down here, Jace Williams, down to the 15-yard line. And here is Nori Galjur for a touch. They always have a Galjur, man. <laughs> always have a Galjur. Nice run. Now, South LaFouche was playing from behind the eight ball in a lot of this game. Two-point conversion is run in by Bruce Lee. And South LaFouche fights for their life, and they come out on top 21 to 18. But once again, Miller McCoy was up in most of this game. And we actually had a report that Miller McCoy was going in at the very end of the game and was down deep in South LaFouche territory and threw an interception. Was that? Is that uh, what we heard? That's what I. That's what I heard. I like I said I wasn't, of course, wasn't at the game or nothing. But just talking with several people, it, it sounded like um, they had a chance at the end. Now you said last year when they actually came in and y'all saw them walking into the jamboree, <laughs> y'all thought it looked like USC Trojans yeah, walking in. They actually got the the USC colors. It looks like and um, we we had finished playing and we were sitting and they kept coming and coming and, and the, I mean they have numbers and size. It's like oh my gosh. Um, and once again, talking with Travis, it, it sounds like they look even better this year. Well, like I said, they will be in town Thursday in Berg to take on South Terrebonne. They have a good schedule. They play teams like St. Charles Catholic and such this year, yeah. so they're going for it. Got to take a commercial break. We'll get out to St. Mary Parish. Three games to St. Mary. We'll look at them all when we get back.